Hello, and here is a basic tutorial on how to use Google Docs or Google Drives. Notice that I've already logged into my Google accounts. Here's my school username, kwilliams at usd115.org. And here are all the options for the different Google applications that I can take advantage of. I'm going to go ahead and click over on Drive. For some of you, it still may say Docs. That's okay. What you haven't done is you haven't transferred your current Google account over to Google Drive. Google is in the process of rebranding and reorganizing some of the applications and some of the software that they've created. So you just need to go ahead and follow the necessary steps on your own time to get shifted over from Google Docs to Google Drive, because that's what everything's going to be here within the next six months to a year. So I click on Google Drive, and this is essentially my network, internet-based creation and storage device for Word documents, Excel documents, PowerPoint presentations, and anything and everything that I want to put out on the internet and keep on the internet for access anywhere, anytime. We're going to use Google Docs and Drive a lot this school year. So following and understanding this tutorial, pretty imperative to be able to uh, carry out all the necessary activities, assignments, projects, etc. for general science or biology this year. A couple quick features. Over here is the navigational toolbar for your Google Drive or Google Docs. My drive would be all of the current folders that I have created for organizational purposes and I keep all of my material located at. Okay, Create tab. Several different things that you may be able to create here using the Google applications. All right, And then finally the upload tab. If you're on a desktop computer or a laptop somewhere around the school and you've created a Word document on that device, you can upload that de um, Word document, PowerPoint, Excel spreadsheet, photo, whatever it may be. You can upload that to your Google Drive and then gain access to it anywhere, anytime from another device, any place. Okay? First things first, though, is I want to create a folder. For some of you, it may still say collections. This folder I'm just going to put down as test folder, 2012-2013. Why do I create this folder? So I can keep myself organized. Notice that it creates it underneath the My Drive tab. Had I had one of these other folders opened up and created that folder, it would have placed it underneath it. For instance, all of these other unit folders under Biology 2011-2012. So make sure you know where you are creating that folder at that time. I created this test folder, but there are no current documents underneath it. That is okay. I'm going to go back to my drive, and I'm going to see that this test folder has popped up and what is the uh, kind of inbox listing of everything that is currently in my drive. Next thing I want to do is I want to create a Word document. I click, simply click Create, and then Document, and it opens up a new tab. This is going to be a great feature for note taking while watching the videos. You can pull the video up online, pull up a Word document through Google Drive, and type away. Up here to the top left, you can title your document. And then you've got plenty of other features underneath, similar to a Word document using uh, Microsoft Word on a laptop or desktop computer. So, as I'm watching the video, I can type away. Take any notes that I see fit and have them available immediately online, anywhere, anytime. Now, the good thing about Google Docs is it saves it automatically. You can see up here under the All Changes Saved um, text. Now, anything that you create under Google Docs or Google Drive is immediately private and made only available for you to view. A lot of the stuff you will want to share with maybe a classmate that you're working on a project with or with Mr. Williams. So you go home, you're assigned to watch the What is Science video, and I want you to pull up a... Google Doc, a Google Word Doc, and write down the notes that you took down from the video, you would need to share that with me so you do not have to email it to me as an attachment or print it off and turn it into me as a hard copy. To share it with somebody, you can go over here to Share, and it pulls up the Share menu. Right now, this is the link that you could share it with. 
via email or a website. You also have a menu here that says who currently has access. Right now, only the people listed below. It is private, this little locked icon. The only person that has access to it is me, since I am the creator of it, as I am the owner. Let's say I want to make my wife, Carissa, have access to it. I click under Add People, and I type in her name or her email address. Now, it will send her an email address saying that she has been made available to view and edit this document. Okay? You can turn that on or off. It's okay. Keep it on if you're going to include me and you want me to look through your notes or that's the way you're submitting your notes for that video to me. Okay? Click Share and Save. And all of a sudden, you can see that her name has popped up underneath that. If you do not want to keep it private, if it's an assignment or activity that you want to make public or I require you to make public, you can go over here to the Change hyperlink, and you have a few different options down here. You can make it public to anybody on the web, anybody that has the link to that document, anybody that is currently under USD 115, so they have an at USD 115.org email address, you can also limit it to anybody under the USD115.org email address that has the link, or you can keep it private. I don't want to adjust the settings, so I'm going to click Cancel, and I'm going to click Done. Now, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this tab, and notice that underneath my Google Drive, I've got this note-taking test 2012-2013 document underneath, and it's saved. So we're going to click and see if it's still made available, and looks like it was. And there it is, just like it was when we closed out of it. So, this is currently being shared with me. So, again, the hypothetical here is you're at home watching the video and taking notes on that Google document as you watch the video, sharing it with the Mr. Williams, and it's made available to Mr. Williams right when you are finished and actually during the process of you creating it. Now, to organize it, let's say that this is a general science document. I'm going to click on the check, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to organize and I'm going to put it under the GS 2012-2013. Oh, no, the test folder 2012-2013. And I'm going to apply the changes. And notice that from the main organizational bar here, it's disappeared and it's currently under the test folder 2012-2013. Okay? Now, for uploading a file, you click Upload, select Files, and it will pull down a drop-down menu of where you can select those files from. That may be your own personal network folder. It could be currently on the desktop if you saved it to somewhere uh, else on your desktop or laptop computer. Um, it's up to you. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to upload General Science 2012-2013 curriculum. I'm going to click Choose. It will pop up the uploading box here. You can see the progress. Word documents typically go upload very quickly. PowerPoints may take a little longer, but all of a sudden I've uploaded it. I'm going to click out of that, and there it is, made available in my Google Drive. So now this General Science Curriculum 2012-2013 is made available to me anywhere, anytime I can access my Google account and pull up Google Docs or Google Drive. I don't have to be at the computer I created it and saved it at to be able to access and modify it. Other things you can create are PowerPoint presentations, Excel spreadsheets, Google Forms, and even drawings of some types. That does it for this little quick tutorial over Google Drive and Google Docs. If you have any questions, please contact me.